although we welcome all people to come to attendance uh, at our churches, uh, those who are engaged in uh, perversions of sexual activity uh, are not accepted as members and are not allowed to be officers of the church. The most powerful group that I know that is impacting the church big time today is the LGBTQ group. Just some few days ago, we saw Elder Ted Wilson and Pastor McFinley address the issue of LGBT affirmation in the SDA church. We thought their powerful presentation would actually lessen the activities of LGBT activists within the SDA church, but that seems not to be the case. They continue unabated, putting pressure on the church to affirm LGBT. Now, this has led to some Adventists suggesting that the LGBT activists within the SDA church leave and start their own church. <laughs> this is serious, friends, and what do you think about this? Now, a general conference employee, Sam Neves, who is said to be associate director of the communication department, posted this on Twitter and I quote, Should gays, lesbians, trans and queer leave the Adventist church? No. If sinners have to leave, I'm out. Should LGBT activists leave the church? Maybe. He posted again, leave the church and if you believe God is leading you, start something new where people who believe this will gather. And friends, it looks like what some nervous posted on Twitter actually offended the LGBT Adventists and also those who are promoting and supporting LGBT affirmation in the church. And they also responded through Spectrum post and I quote, Spectrum has stood in solidarity with our Adventist LGBT family and friends for decades. We will not stop. We will not leave. The activist LGBT Adventist community belongs in our pews and pulpits, in our classrooms and our conference office buildings, in our spiritual family. We want to worship with them, celebrate their marriages, pray together through the hard times and in unity lift our voices and sing. We have this hope because we do. So friends, the current discussion within the SDA church is that do you agree with some neighbors that LGBT activists within the SDA church should leave and start their own new church or they should not, they should stay within the church? We want to know what your thoughts are, so do comment down there. Now, who are these LGBT activists within the SDA church that some Adventists suggest they leave and start their own new church or join another denomination that affirms LGBT? It looks like this is referring to Alicia Johnston, Paul Anthony Turner, and the rest. These LGBT activists within the SDA church and Loma Linda University Health actually promoted LGBT acceptance and affirmation. But before that, their flyer read, Micah 6 8 series, Love Thy Neighbor, a conversation about equity and belonging for LGBTQ plus people. So now let's watch the clip and I will put the link to the whole video in this video's description so you can watch it after watching this video. So let's go ahead and watch it. Micah 6-8 is a monthly forum that we host um, through the University Spiritual Care Office. It is an opportunity for us. We host this as a space to create conversations and to share information on issues of diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice. Um, that I am an Afro-Caribbean American woman. I grew up in a context where when we had conversations about hurt persons who were LGBT, and back then we didn't even use those words. I grew up in a, in a, in a, in a society and a culture that was very homophobic. And I can tell you that at a very young age, I'm thinking about nine years old, it didn't make sense to me that the way we responded to persons who were different was with violence. So that's the culture that I come from. And from as early as nine years old, I kept thinking something is wrong with this story. I grew up in a Christian home, my nation. My nation uh, identifies as a place where Christianity is the most, you can't, you, you trip and you fall into a church in Jamaica. You trip, you're bumping into an Adventist church. And if you trip, you're bumping into all other kinds of denomination. So we grew up in this place, in this culture that was steeped in the word of God. And yet when it came to talking about persons who were lesbian or gay, we responded with violence and it didn't make sense to me. 
And the quotes that I lifted up for you are just to shape why we're having this conversation. Because as someone who is ridiculously committed to this Middle Eastern rabbi named Jesus Christ, when I look at his ministry and I look at how he dealt with people, the way we as persons who identify as people of faith in general, and in particular as like persons who are, are Christian, it does not make sense. The young people say, make it make sense, right? And so we're here this afternoon to really engage and to hear the lived experiences of persons who identify as lesbian, gay, queer, part of the queer community, and to also think about what does it mean for us to be neighborly? And it's particularly important for us at Loma Linda University, where on the center of our campus, we have a structure reflective of Jesus' story of the Good Samaritan, that we answer the question, love thy neighbor? Like, are people who are LGBTQ our neighbors? And so I want to invite Alicia to begin um, by sharing, just locating herself and telling us a little bit about her story. That will be followed by Paul Anthony and then Chris, and then we'll jump into um, our dialogue with the questions we have for this afternoon. The questions that I think I'm an educator and a journalist. I love asking questions. And my sense is that God loves people who ask questions. And the questions, uh, Justin Kim uh, has framed three questions that need to be answered before we can have a conversation that is equitable, actually. Uh, the first one is, is sexual orientation a choice? And I remember attending a workshop where a young gay man got up front. There were a hundred of us and most of us cisgender. And he said, uh, why would I choose this? And then he detailed what he had gone through. And then he said, tell me, when did you choose to be heterosexual? And those of us who are hetero heterosexual, sat back and I remember thinking, when was that? I couldn't come up with the time. I think it's a good question to ask. I've asked it hundreds of times of people, including students. Is not the Bible. If we could hold our theological doctrines a little bit more loosely and have a more open conversation about the Bible, I think that that would be the next step and a very Adventist step for the church to take. Friends, it looks like these LGBT activists within the SDA church are making it sound as if the SDA church and other Christian denominations hate LGBT people, but that is not the case. Not affirming LGBT within the SDA church does not mean we hate LGBT people. Not allowing gay and lesbian marriages in our pulpit does not mean we hate LGBT people. Not hiring LGBT pastors does not also mean we hate LGBT people. But what do these mean? They mean following the true teachings or guidance of the Bible concerning human sexuality. So friends, the question still stands. Should LGBT activists within the SDA church who don't believe in the church's position concerning human sexuality leave the church and start their own new church or join another church? What do you think? If you have not brought in your comments, just share your thoughts concerning this. I think maybe they should leave. That is what I think. So friends, this is all that I had to share with you today. And for more updates concerning what is happening in and outside of the SDA Church, be sure to subscribe to this channel in order not to miss any video we publish. Thank you for watching and see you next time.